Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hipnitz podcast. This is episode 101. Welcome everyone. My name is Hannah and I am recording this podcast in northern um, Tasmania in Australia. I am a Swedish expat and I live here with my husband and our two daughters. And this is my podcast mostly about knitting and a little bit of hand dyeing and other crafty woolly things. This is my time to sit down here in my studio and relax and have some time for me talking about things that I love and sharing them with you. So welcome so much for coming here and um, sharing some of this time with me. It's always lovely to catch up with my viewers and um, I really appreciate you being here. First up I will tell you that I have actually recorded a whole episode 101 101 one time already. A couple of days ago I had a nice relaxing day, I had everything set up, I did a nice one hour long video, I had my beautiful roses from the garden behind me and I did um, a recording, I had fun, I enjoyed it and then when I was going to edit it I realized that something had been messing with my microphone and the um, audio recording and I had all these crackling sounds in the video and um, I tried to edit it out and tried to cut pieces out that were really bad and then I tried to export the audio to another software and fix it that way and in the end I edited it twice, didn't feel happy with it, still uploaded it to YouTube but I didn't make it public and I went in and had a look a couple of times and I was just not happy with it the way it was. It was fine but I thought I don't want to do that to people, I don't want to do that to my viewers having to sit through that crackling sound. So after um, being, being a bit unhappy about it, I have now decided to sit down and do maybe a little bit of a shorter version of that episode and hopefully the sound will be fine this time and I can upload to YouTube and be happy with it and hopefully it will be um, fine for you to watch and you will enjoy it. So because um, this is the second time I do this and I have already spent quite a few hours on my episode 101. I think I'll just go straight to things today and um, not do so much of um, talking about anything and nothing. <laughs> so I have some knitting to share with you today. I have been doing some knitting but I don't have a lot of projects that I'm working on and you know you might understand why. And um, I have been doing a little bit of dyeing and in the episode I recorded that will not be released. I talked a lot about the dyeing but I think today I'll, I'll stick to only a few things. And uh, I also have some projects that I'm planning that I might share with you. So welcome. I hope you're sitting down having a nice relaxing time maybe with a cup of tea or some other nice drink. It's uh, getting warmer here now in Australia. We've had quite some cold times, cold days, um, so woolly jumpers and tea is still quite the thing um, to go for. Does, do I look crooked? Does everything look a bit... I don't know. Everything was beautiful a couple of days ago. It was perfect. Today it is what it is, I hope. Um, I hope we'll still have a nice enjoyable time together talking about knitting. Okay, so as you can see, I actually started and finished a serious jumper since I last recorded my episode 100. I just mentioned quickly that I did record an episode in Swedish and that's the video that I ep uploaded after episode 100. And um, I had a lot of beautiful uh, comments and feedback on that. Thank, thank you so much to my Swedish and Scandinavian viewers for um, checking that out and commenting and um, 
you know, saying nice things about it. That was really lovely. And I think I'll do a Swedish episode every now and then when I can fit it in. Um, yes, so I did talk about this jumper a little bit. But last time I recorded one of my normal episodes, I don't think I had started it. But I did do this since last time. It's Sirius by Camille Vaud. I knitted in some Yo Sharp DK Classic, which is a 100% Australian wool spun in Italy and it's not super wash, so I think it's really good for colour work. Um, I did have a bit of trouble with this jumper. I knew I did a gauge swatch and I knew that my gauge was a bit off. I couldn't get the tight gauge that the pattern called for. So I knew that with my looser knitting, the garment would come out bigger than the pattern um, was written to be. So what I did was I I looked at my gauge swatch and then I did some calculations and I figured I'll go down a few sizes or I think I did a second size and I thought that would then end up being a good size for me. But when I did start knitting it and I did colour work, I think my gauge was even looser than my gauge swatch was. Um, I kept knitting and I really en enjoy the colour work. Um, the blue one I've used as a main colour is the China colourway. And then I had a Suclamen colourway, it's a purple, and I had this a beige brown here that I also bought recently. And I bought those from the Yo Sharp website on their in their sales section. And then I had and I don't know if you can see them now, but there's a um a heathered green, it's an orchard colourway, the orchard colourway, and then there's actually a little bit of grey, heathered grey in here as well. And the green and the grey were leftovers from projects that I have done previously. Um, I think I use seven and a half or eight skeins of the main colour and less than a skein, 50 gram skein of each of the other colours. As you can see, it came out really big. So I did the whole yoke and realised that it was absolutely humongous. It was enormous. Um, but it's always hard to tell when you only have the yoke and not sleeves and the body. But I could see that it was really, really big. You can see it's huge. Um, and I thought this looks more like a swan show. And Caitlin Hunter, she has a patterned pattern for a swan show. I'll try to see if I can insert photos of, of that so you can see what I'm talking about. But I thought it looks a bit like that. So I had a look at that design and all of the projects um, of, of that design, all the projects that have been made on Ravelry to see, because I realised that I would have to modify the rest of this jump. Okay, so now my phone turned off because my memory was full. So I had to delete some videos and links. Anyway, I was talking about this jumper and the huge yoke of it. I looked at the Caitlin Hunter design and I um, realized I had to modify this one to accommodate for the big yoke and um, I looked at the swan show and I thought okay well the sleeves on the swan show are quite tight and then it's a really loose body sort of quite big and um, I had already taken off the, the sleeve stitches and I didn't really want to go back and make the sleeves smaller already here so what I did um, I thought okay well I can I know that I need to sort of decrease rapidly to make a smaller sleeve and that will it, I can make it look um, like that was sort of meant to be in the design but what I started to do was to just knit straight down on the body. I knew that I wanted it to be loose fitting, not too long um, to make it look okay with the yoke. So I did that and I've done twisted rib on all the ribbing. Um, and I think that's what it calls for in series. So I knit the body 
I didn't bind it off, I left it, and then I started on the sleeves, and I did the really rapid decreases here, so it's almost like a triangle here, so every second row I decreased two stitches, and then until I got the circumference, I can't say that word in English, until I got um, the size of the sleeve um, that I felt was good, and then I did the long ribbing, because I saw that on some of the swan shows, and I thought that looked quite nice, and so I did that on the sleeves, then tried it on and checked how I found the length of the body and I was happy with that so I bound it off um, and I thought it's still huge, it's very wide, it's funny fit, it sits, you have to adjust it a little bit to make sure it sits fine. I don't have the best t-shirt under today, I did the other day when I recorded but I'm not upset about it at all. Uh, <laughs> um, then I washed it and blocked it and was hoping that it would maybe um, shrink up a bit because it is pure wool and not super wash. I wasn't too worried about it stretching. I laid it down flat on a towel on a heated floor in the bathroom which is the best way I f find to um, block my knits and make them dry quickly. And then I tried it on and it was still damp and it was so big. The sleeves went all the way to the tip of my fingers and the body was really big and hanging and I was thinking, oh, what can I do, what can I do, can I put it in the dryer? I thought, I'll just, I'll let it dry completely and I'll see what it's like and I might just have to rip up the, the cuffs and um, make the sleeves shorter. But then when it had dried completely and I tried it on, I found that it was um, not as big it was when it was damp and I've been wearing it a bit I took some photos that I will insert um, so I, I think it's okay the only thing that makes it look um, like it's not um, a design that was meant to be like this is that the color work here before the, main, the plain sleeves it sort of puffs out a bit If I'm moving around, I'm doing things, I think it's fine. It's probably not something that I would wear out um, to do things because it's more like a home jumper being comfy or, you know, if it's really cold and have it as an outer layer when you go out. And um, yes, it's just a different type of style of jumper than other ones in my um, hand-knit wardrobe. But I'm not going to rip it out. I'm happy with it. I'm really happy with the colours. I think it's fun. And I had a good time making it. The thing was, because I knew that I had to modify it, I could not stop knitting on this until I had like solved the problem. Why did I do that? Oh, goodness. What have I become? Um, uh, yes, until I had solved the problem or made sure that it was a wearable garment, I could not stop knitting on it. So... That's the reason why I have started it and finished it since the last time I recorded a podcast. <laughs> and that's all that I have finished. I have actively been working on three things in the last few weeks and um, I can show you two of those. The other jumper that I was working on when I last recorded is my Fenmont by Emily Walton. I think her name is, yes. This was a free pattern on or from Expression Fiber Arts. I think I signed up for a newsletter and I was able to get it for free. And I'm using Collar Girl Collective. Um, I think the tweed base is called Dapper. Do I have a? I'll show you this one. That's the one. And high T is the colorway for this one, and that's this gray one. And I think the pink one is girly, and the brown yellow is whole grain. So, yes, this is Fenmont. It is a really good pattern for a tweed yarn. It has this little bit of texture to it. It's only pearl row every so often. Um, has a bit of transitioning between the colors. Um, my colours are quite different and it's not really a fade but 
it still has a nice soft um, transition between colors. I'm really happy with this. It took me a long time to settle on this pattern and to find the best thing to do with these special skeins in my stash. Um, I have not worked on it a lot because I've been doing serious, but it's been a little bit um, like my sock knitting. Instead of knitting socks, I've been doing the play knitting on this one. I have now come to the length that I'm happy with and I'm just going to bind off and then start on the sleeves. And I still have plenty, plenty of the yarn left. Those ones. And uh, I'm happy with the fit of this one. It doesn't have any shaping, but it's a fingering weight garment and um, it just sort of shapes to the body, really. And I've, I've made a few similar ones before that I have really enjoyed and I wear them a lot. So I think this will be a very um, wearable item that I will use a lot. And it's not very thin. Uh, sorry, it is thin. It's not very thick, I was going to say. I'm knitting it at quite a loose gauge. Um, so I think I'll be able to wear it even through the warmer months of the year. Yeah, so I just have to bind that off and then do the sleeves. That's fun. I'm so happy to be actually having a um, made item out of this yarn because I've, you know, it's it's nice and pretty to look at, but it's even nicer when you can wear it and you're not the only one that sees it. And then I have some plain sock knitting that I have been working on a while because I'm not working on them very much. And they're my uh, just plain vanilla socks for my daughter. Uh, I'm knitting them out of my dandy sock in the coral orange cup coral and the winter garden colorway. I am working on the second sock. I'm using nine inch circles. I might have to put in for the afterthought heel here. I have maybe another three, four centimeters to go, then the toe. And then put a heel in. So they're getting there slowly. I'm not in a hurry. These are my um, purse knitting, my handbag knitting that I have with me most places. And then um, the other thing that I have been working on quite a bit since I finished this one is um, a project using the Advent Calendar Minis. So all the advent calendars, all the Rose Hip Island calendars, and Rose Hip Island is my hand dyeing business. You can find that on Etsy. I didn't say where you can find me. I'm Rose Hip Chick on um, Ravelry and Instagram. Goodness. Okay, so all the advent calendars have been shipped. A few people have received them. Um, I also did some 12 Days of Christmas sets. I only had five of those, and they were what I had time to do after the advent calendars were all done and um, everything is sold everything is shipped and I had one advent calendar left for me and this is the third year I did it the first year I did not save any of the minis for myself last year I saved some of the minis for me to be able to do something out of my advent calendar but I never did I thought I want, I, th I think it was because I wanted to use all of them together and I just couldn't find a project that I wanted to do or and I was distracted by other things. And then I did use some of the minis to make smaller projects. I made a hat, a faded hat, uh, for example. Anyway, this year I also have a full advent calendar that I saved for me and I really wanted to actually make something out of it. And I thought it would be fun for once to actually every day in December from December 1st to 24th to actually share on Instagram the, the mini and the tea that came with the mini for those that chose to have the tea option and then knit it up. So I have started to make the Planina wrap by Shara Lambeth. I'm on day five, I think. We're halfway through November. So hopefully I can keep up with it and have it ready in December to um, share it with you every day on Instagram. So that's what I'm doing. So I can't show you that, obviously, because the advent calendar is secret. 
but I can say that it's quite addictive and it's very hard to stop. You just it's easy, nice knitting, and you just want to get to the next colour and see how they all work together. And so far I'm so happy with them. I know because it's um it's quite a bit of a mix of colours, so it might be that there's some colours that not everyone, but some people might feel like they're a bit off from the other ones. I don't know. You never know. Everyone has different tastes and you, you just do not know. When you do something that's secret, um, you just, you can't, it's very hard to make sure that it's something that everyone will like every single skein. Anyway, just for the first five days, I'm so happy and I'm, I'm already thinking, oh, I think I need to dye up full skeins of these because they go really well together. I think I could use those in a project. <laughs> so it might be dangerous to, to knit up my mini, so I might just need to dye more. Anyway, that's another thing I'm working on. I think I might share some of the things that I am planning and dreaming about. And with that, I might mention the 2019 Aussie Dyer Sock Along. We have a knit along in my Ravelry group, Rose Hip Knits Podcast group on Ravelry. And the 2019 Aussie Dyer Sock Along is um, a knit along where we challenge ourselves to knit items, anything, from an indie dyer from every state and territory in Australia and one from New Zealand, if you want to. All the details about the cow is in the Ravelry group. It's not too late to join. You can do one project or you can do eight projects, you can do 16 projects. There's, everyone can join in. And there's been some prizes through the year and there will be more prizes at the end of the year. So go check out the, the Ravelry thread if you, if you haven't. And if you have started to join in and you have more projects that you want to add to the Knit Along, don't forget to post them. This um, Really, the, the, the Ravelry group and the post about just both the finished object thread but also the chatter thread, they have really been the highlight of um, the year for me. I have so enjoyed seeing all the projects and had fun following um, conversations uh, between the people that are joining in. Anyway, I have knit items from every state and territory except, except for Western Australia. So that's something that I would like to do before the end of the year. So I have a month and a half. And there are quite a few indie dyes in Western Australia that I really admire and wouldn't mind to knit something out of the yarn. And then I watched uh, Peter's last episode of her podcast, the Dingo Dye Works, and she announced that she is packing up her studio and she's moving, so she might not be dying for a while. Um, and she has beautiful yarn. She has other passions in her life now, so I don't feel too sad about it because I think you know she has other things that she's happy with, and she she'll probably come back to to dying. But I remember that I had three skeins of Dingo Dye Works in my stash that was very generously given to me from a podcast viewer. And I'll show them to you. They came in a pack, three of them together. These ones. These are the single ply merino. And they, what are they? So Loretta, Florence, and this is unnamed. And they've been sitting in my stash I was thinking about using them for a giveaway or a prize but I didn't want to um, divide them up so it was quite a big thing three skeins anyway now I thought after Peter's podcast I thought I really want to use some of the yarn so I, I wanted to make something out of this and the person who gave them to me gave me a few things and she said choose what you would like to use for yourself and give away the rest of them so I choose to to use them these for myself but as always when you have a huge or a large amount of yarn you want to use as much of it as you can for the same project or at least that's how I think I don't like only using a little bit because then it might be harder to find something to make out of the rest of it I don't know but I was thinking three skeins I could make a garment I could make a faded garment out of these 
And I really want to make something before the end of the year and I don't, I think I want to make a smaller thing. So I think what I'll do is that I'll cake these up and then just use a little bit of each and make a beanie, a faded beanie. And I will probably use uh, one of my mohairs with it. I don't know which one, one of those. And make a fluffy, nice faded beanie for my Western Australia entry to um, the knit along. So that's one plan I have. Um, and then I have some plans for, for colour work um, jumpers. I feel like I need to have one colour work item on the needles at all times, just like you need a sock at all times. Um, but I'll share that with you when um, I have something on the needles. Okay, so... A bit of tea, cold, but still. Um, then I have a little bit of dyeing to share with you. I have been doing a little bit of dyeing since I finished all of the packing of advent calendars and, and dyeing minis. Um, here are some of the latest things I listed on Etsy. Cranberry, beehive and mustard are those ones. Here's tulip fields and then there's a new one that I haven't actually listed yet. I might get that down to show you soon. Um, in the last video 101 episode that I am okay with that it's um, a waste of time <laughs> anyway I showed all of those but I'm not doing that this time because I don't I don't have the time this time <laughs> but I'll show you some minis that I died I am um, I had some undyed minis left when I had done the advent calendars and I had done the 12 days of Christmas. Um, what I had, uh, what I dyed up first were these two and these were dyed, oh my gosh. Okay. I had these two and what these two were dyed with was leftover dye from other dyeing. And I thought they were really nice. Uh, sort of pastel-y, light tonal colours. And I wanted to make more minis to go with these in a set. So I dyed up these ones. So this, I actually dyed up five more, so I have seven in total. So grey, yellow, pink, tealy, green, blue, purple, and then that green and orange. And I thought that went very nice together. And I love them. They're nice and tonal. And they'll be beautiful and um, knit up. They'll, you know, have depth to them. But I thought, oh, I want to do a little bit more. I want to add another dimension to them. So I, I left one like this, and then I had another four sets that I brought back to the dye pots, and I added some um, speckles in dye stock in high concentration. So I didn't speckle with the pigments. I speckled splashed the skeins with high concentration of dye stock of the same color that they were already dyed. So the orange got splashes of a darker orange. Same with the pink, purple, yellow, a bit harder to see on the yellow in this light, and the teal, the green, and the grey. And then I put all of them together and I thought they were really nice and I, I took a video of that so I'll show you that one. So I have these 14 mini skeins that go really well together, really nice um, combination, a lot of those, and then I have another four sets of the ones with the speckles on. So they'll be up in my shop at some point. So anyone, because I only have these of all the 14, if anyone really <laughs> would like them let me know and I'll reserve them for you. And then I had a little bit of 
the dye stock left from when I did the splashing and speckling. So I dyed up a few of these ones. Doesn't look very nice anymore because I had it out when I last recorded this episode. Um, so what I did with these, normally I dye everything in, in pots, but with this one I had a pan. So I poured some of the purpley brown on, pink, green, a bit of orange, and then grey. Um, and left a lot of the undyed on there. I think that that's really nice to have that light um, variegated um, colour colorway. So I have, uh, I think I have six of these ones. Yeah, so that, that um, dyeing started with me, well really it all started with me having some leftover dye and had two different colourways on minis, then wanted to add to those and I did that and then after that I wanted to add another dimension, I did the splashing and speckling and then after that I had some leftover dye and I dyed the full skeins in variegated colourway. So um, yes, you, you start with one thing and then a week later you have um, gone five more steps and have more colourways and more dyed yarn, which is great, it's fun. That's how it often happens. Okay, well, it looks like I've managed to do this a second time. And hopefully, audio will be fine. Hopefully, I will not sound rushed. It's quite nice to have a shorter episode, actually. Somehow, I've managed to make my episodes an hour long every time lately, which is a little bit on the long side, I find. Not only for you to sit through, but also for me to edit. So. A shorter one might be a good thing. Okay, well, it's the weekend here now, and we are going to do a few things. Um, have some nice family time, maybe do some baking. We're seeing family, and yes, it will be a nice weekend. Okay. So that's all I have for this episode. I am happy I redid it, even though it's a lot of time, and I still haven't, I'm not completely over the wasted time on the last <laughs> video, but you know, I've got to spend this time with you again and you know, I love talking about my knitting, so really, it's like when you have to rip something and, and knit it again, you should just think about, you know, you get to enjoy the yarn another time, so that's how I should think about this. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining me. If you have found the podcast after the Swedish episode, then you're somewhere in Scandinavia watching. Um, thank you for checking out an English um, version of the podcast or the original, um, the original podcast, I could say, maybe. I don't know. Okay. And now I'm rambling and now I'm just adding minutes onto this video, which I should not be doing. So um, I hope you're all well, that you look after yourself, that you're safe. And um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I sure did. I always do love catching up with you. So um, that's it for this time. So until I see you for the next episode, take care. Bye.